Here on the show floor at CES, electric cars and self-driving are all the range, which is why Nissan decided to take the wraps off the highly anticipated extended range LEAF for 2019. This is basically the same LEAF that we saw last year with a larger 60 kilowatt battery pack and up to 226 miles of range. I'm at the 2019 Consumer Electronics Show. Let's take a first look. So under the hood of the 2019 LEAF E Plus, these are where Nissan has made the biggest changes. Now, what they did do is they basically beefed up the electric motor and the batteries, which you're now looking at as a 160 kilowatt electric motor, and that translates to about 214 horsepower and 250 foot-pounds of torque. Now that is up from the standard LEAF, which only has 147 horsepower. Now the battery is now a 60 kilowatt hour battery, which is up uh, nearly 50% versus the old 40 kilowatt hour battery, which Nissan still technically offers. The biggest news is this will now go up to 220 six miles in terms of range. That basically puts it right in the same class as things like the Chevrolet Bolt, Hyundai and Kia's upcoming new Kona EV and Nero EV. And then of course the long awaited $35,000 Tesla Model 3, which still is not available yet. Now, because it does have a bigger battery, Nissan did also beef up the charging capabilities. So now Nissan says it has the ability to charge up to hundred kilowatt hours from the uh, DC fast charging port. Or if you guys want to use the standard level one and level two charger, Nissan says it should take roughly about the same time as the standard battery uh, range leaf. So on the outside of the Leaf E Plus, you can see Nissan hasn't really done anything to differentiate it from the standard Leaf, but I'll go over some of the changes Nissan has made for this generation. As you guys know, it came out in 2018. You can see the front end has the latest version of Nissan's corporate V-Motion grille. You have LED headlights as standard with some of the blue accents. The charge port is accessed from the front here, as I showed you guys earlier. And overall, compared to the frumpy looks of the first generation, this is a much better looking car. It looks lower, it looks wider, it looks sleeker, so it doesn't look so strange like the previous generation which kind of had like an insect like look to the actual design now in terms of the actual proportions nissan kept the wheelbase at 106.3 inches long it is about two inches longer versus the first generation this up level sl model has those 17 inch alloy wheels which do look nice they're also wrapped in kind of lower rolling resistance tires to give this car a little bit more uh, range as, as opposed to something with bigger wheels now this particular one being the sl sl plus also has a black painted roof no sunroof or panoramic sunroof option that i'm seeing but i actually do like the combination that you're getting with the two-tone with the white the black you have this kind of floating rear roof pillar that nissan first showed off on the murano a couple of years ago so that's kind of their signature design theme now over at the rear of the new leaf you can see uh, the design also is much improved versus the previous generation you kind of have led combination rear tail lights you have some blue accents here to kind of show off that this is their ev model and then this is the only way you're going to know that you have a plus model uh, it'll actually say plus underneath the uh, trim level designation of course nissan offers it in several different trims s sv and SL. The Plus basically lets everyone know that you have a little bit of a bigger battery pack versus the standard model. Now, the Leaf being a hatchback, this car still remains remarkably practical. And Nissan says that despite the bigger batteries, it actually only raises the floor about five millimeters. So you still have the standard cargo capacity. The seats still full down 60-40. Uh, Nissan didn't have official numbers in terms of the cargo areas, but whenever this vehicle does go on sale, I'll be sure to share that at a later date. So on the inside of the Leaf E Plus, you can see the changes are also very minimal compared to the standard uh, range Leaf. The only real change that they did make was they, they included a larger screen there. It's now an eight inch uh, infotainment system. It's the latest version of the Nissan Connect head unit with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And in terms of the rest of the interior, it's very conventional. If you guys don't like some of these crazy EVs with their strange looking interiors, we'll get into this and you'll basically just know how to use a lot of it. You have you know the eight inch screen here. In terms of the materials, it's all kind of hard touch plastic, which kind of is disappointing, but Nissan kind of invested their money instead in the batteries and the powertrain technology. Uh, what what they did include as standard on the E Plus models is their ProPilot Assist. So all the suite of driver sa safety system is all standard, which is definitely a great thing for a vehicle like this. Um, this SL Plus model also has these really comfortable leather, leather seats. It feels nice and spacious in here. And overall, I think that a lot of people are going to get into this interior uh, and find a lot to like with it, with it. But let's hop into the back seat real quick and see how it compares with the front seats. So with the Leaf being a compact hatchback, the backseat is actually surprisingly usable despite the small dimensions on the outside. Um, this is kind of where I had the seats to our position where I would drive the vehicle. And I'm five foot seven, you can see there's pretty good amounts of leg room back here, good foot space. Although the battery pack, I am noticing, I'm feeling that the floor is raised up because I'm kind of sitting up a little higher up. It's like stadium style seating now. Um, but overall, I think it's actually very useful. I wish that there was a center armrest right here to kind of give you a little more comfort if it's just two people across. Now, I think the best thing about this new uh, 
Leaf E Plus is the fact that not only does it have a bigger battery, uh, more range, but it also has better performance. Nissan says their 0 to 60 time should be in the six second range, which is a huge improvement, especially if you guys looked at the first generation Leaf. Now, Nissan didn't have any final official pricing yet on this model. They said they'll announce that at a later date, but the vehicle will be going on sale in the spring of 2019. And I'm gonna estimate this car will probably cost around $36,000, which is about a five to $6,000 increase versus the standard model. For Redline Reviews at the 2019 Consumer Electronics Show, I'm Sophie Bay.